I greet you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as we gather here to worship and praise our God. And thank you to the uh, bell chimers who join us after a long time. We've missed you and we're glad that you can be here with us uh, celebrating this day. Welcome. So we, we come here together uh, to... Um, to offer our praise and thanksgiving as we do every Sunday. We come here to receive and, and to hear God's word, to pray for the needs of uh, our brothers and sisters in the world, and also to seek forgiveness for our sins. By the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, may we give ourselves to this time. It's just one hour, and we would like you to be fully present. And we welcome those of you who are also uh, watching us uh, online. Uh, my name is David Lagos Fonseca, if you don't know me. Um, I'm the pastor here at Our Saviors. And today, uh, look at this crowd here. <laughs> today we celebrate Scout Sunday. And we welcome uh, Troop 392. Uh, PAC 100, Venture and Crew uh, 392, and the newly added Troop uh, 392G. Girl Scouts, right? Yep. And we are pleased to welcome you today and to honor uh, our young people engaged in the honorable tradition of scouting. We are proud of you. And here we gladly acknowledge the importance of your presence, you know, the importance of your presence to us in our community. We thank the leaders who give uh, so much valuable time and effort in, in convening and training them, and for all the help uh, with their troops in any way. We believe in the values they espouse as scouts, and you leaders have taught them the discipline, the virtue of work, reverence for life and nature, and, and the ethics of honesty and trustworthiness. So today we join together, the, our Savior's United Methodist Church, to celebrate all of you and pray uh, for scouts here and in other, many other places in the world, that they may continue to find joy and blessedness in their programs and their activities, that they may grow, that you may grow, young people, into adulthood as strong and as responsible men and women who will make valuable contributions to our churches, to our communities, our countries, and the world. Uh, welcome everyone to this time of praise and worship. And um, February, we know February uh, historically uh, is Black History Month. A time to remember the past. Because when we know our history, when we know the past, we can shape the future. I invite Kimberly Hornstein, um, who will share today the contributions of African American in investors, inventors, to the life of our communities and the world. Okay, thank you so much, Pastor, for that introduction. So, inventions, they're not my thing, history isn't my thing, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to learn just a little bit more. Thomas Jennings is the first inventor we're going to talk about. He was born in 1791. He was a free-born African-American and a New Yorker. He became one of the leaders of the abolitionist movement. He made his fortune in a dry-cleaning device called the dry-scouring. Jennings was 30 years old when he received his patent. 
And what he did with the money that he first earned was to help free his enslaved relatives. He used it for legal fees. He was also sorry guys, the founder of the first Abyssinian church. I feel like I will add an echo. <laughs> okay. Um, this church was a pillar in Harlem African American community in New York. He served also as a secretary of the first annual convention of the people of color in Philadelphia in 1831. He also organized the Legal Rights Association in 1855, raising challenges to discrimination and funding and organizing legal defenses for court cases. The next inventor is Alexander Miles. He was from Minnesota. He invented a mechanism to help with an elevator door. So back in the day, elevators needed to be open and closed manually by either the person riding in the elevator or a dedicated elevator operator. Nowadays, you just get in an elevator, it opens and closes. But back in the day, if you see old movies, you literally had to open it. And there were a lot of accidents. People fell into the elevator shafts and were injured or, di or died. So his invention truly saved lives. The next inventor was known for his shoe lasting machine. Not shoe lacing, but shoe lasting. His name was Jan Ernst Matslinger. He was born in Suriname. In 1886, he invented this device. It basically molded the upper section of our shoes so they would last longer. He had more than 100 operating machines in Europe and America by 1890, so in just four years. He was also known for his invention of the pneumatic sewing machine, which used air pressure instead of electricity. So this machine was used where they had to do a lot of work in little time. The next two inventors were African American women. The first one was born early in the 20th century, and her patent was for centralized heating in homes. It used natural gas, was, which was new at its time. Um, she was motivated as she lived in New York. It was really cold, sorry, New Jersey, and they had wood-burning fireplaces. This was not too safe because they had to keep the wood-burning fireplaces burning all night, which caused potential fires. So her invention is currently used in the homes that most of us live in today. What was amazing about her at the time, many women didn't go to college, yet alone African-American women, and she went to Howard in Washington, DC. Um, she preceded the Civil Rights Movement and the Women's Libertarian Movement, which subsequently removed many barriers for women and African-American women. So her accomplishment for a patent and being the first African-American woman to receive a patent was truly remarkable. Lastly, another woman, um, she was the first African-American woman to complete a residency in ophthalmology and first African-American female doctor to receive a medical patent. This was more recent. It was in 1976. She co-founded the American Institute for the Prevention of Blindness, and she thought eyesight was just a common human right. Her invention became well known um, for cataract surgery. It was called the Lasofaco probe. Um, the device created a less painful way to remove cataracts. Her patent came in 1988, and she was the first African-American female doctor to receive a medical patent. Among her roles in the medical field, Bath was a strong advocate for telemedicine, which we know has been well used during COVID times. When she started with telemedicine, it was to help people in remote areas get medical help. So you see um, a wide variety of people from the abolitionist movement all the way to modern times um, have influenced what we do um, and our health and the shoes we wear. So um, you know, appreciate those inventors, appreciate those engineers, and appreciate all people of color, whether their ethnicity is black, Latin American, white, Asian, um, 
and, and thank you for all what you do to help our movement as we become a more inclusive and diverse society. Thank you so much. The realm of God is not far away from us. For in God we live and move and have our being. It is in this place and in the silent places of our uh, soul that we turn to God this morning. For God alone is our rock and our refuge. And I invite you now to bow our heads in prayer. <clears throat> Holy God, we, we come today to seek, to see, to touch, and know your presence here among us. Be with us as we listen for your call, as we listen for your word. Help us to hear fresh the good news of the gospel, that power and steadfast love arise from you, our rock and our salvation. Receive what we bring, who we are, and help us to experience your presence your redemption, transformation, and love. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, attention. Father God, forward march. Father God, halt. Post the colors. Hand over heart or scout salute. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance yes. to, to the, the flag. flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard two, color guard about face, return to ranks. Color guard halt. Hello guard is dismissed with our thanks. Audience, you may sit down. And you may stand up again. <laughs> As we join our voices in the singing of the hymn for the beauty of the earth.
please visit it. The honor and privilege of uh, introducing you to uh, Jeff Waterman, the Scoutmaster. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everybody at home. I'm Jeff Waterman. I'm the Scoutmaster for Troop 392B. Um, that's the boy troop. I just quickly want to introduce some of the other leaders that we have with us here. Um, at the very, very high level, uh, at the council level, Bill, how many units are in the council? So 500, so we have four. You at Our Savior sponsor four units. At the council level, there are 500 scattered in our area. Mr. Bill Cohn, our council commissioner, uh, is joining us today. Uh, representing our PAC 100, that's our Cubs, right? So those would be our grade school uh, scouts. Uh, we've got Pete Ginesco. I'm representing the boy troop from our newly founded girl troop, which is growing very rapidly. Uh, we have Mr. Anthony Valle. Give a wave, Anthony. Thank you. Uh, and then continuing scouting, uh, once they've gone past 18 and up to 21, we have a venturing crew here at Our Saviors, um, Jose Cabalfin, who's in the back waving. So those are the four units that are sponsored right here. Uh, and I thank you all for the support and the encouragement uh, that is provided to all four of these units. The facilities here are amazing. We did our court of honor here uh, last Tuesday where we award ranks and merit badges. Uh, the technology that you have with the live streaming and the recording is amazing. So we really appreciate the facilities, the support um, that you have given to all of our units here. There's one more person I'd like to recognize because I have a feeling this is going to be her last Scout Sunday in this building. Ms. Sam Meyer does everything. She's at the council level. She's at the crew level. She's at the troop level. Uh, she, at our last court of honor, received her sixth Eagle Scout mentor pin. Right, So that means an Eagle Scout deemed her the most important person in her journey. So I want to just take a moment, if you could all just give a, a brief round of applause for Ms. Sam Meyer. <laughs> she has done so much for so many youth. Uh, briefly, uh, I'm going to pass it off to Mr. Jim Leppert, um, who is the liaison between the church uh, and all of the units. Uh, but I just wanted to let all of you know uh, we've had a very special year at Troop 392B. Uh, we've awarded Eagle Scout uh, in 2021 to five different scouts, including three of them last Tuesday. Uh, so that's, that's a really high number. Eagle Scout's a pretty rare thing, so to have five of them in one year um, uh, is very great. So just please know your, your pack is strong, your troops are strong, and your crew is strong. And it's all because of the support that we get from you. So thank you very much. And I'll pass it over to Jim. I forgot one really important thing. Look at Pastor David. He's in a scout shirt. <laughs> right? He is 100% trained as an adult leader in scouting now. So good for Pastor David. Good morning. As Jeff said, I am your scouting coordinator. The scouting coordinator is elected by the local church and represents your local church in the various activities of the various um, uh, organizations which we include in our community outreach youth ministry. The, uh, what I'd like you to do is when I mention your name, please stand so that people can see you. The first award goes to Troop 392B. <laughs> These are our Trailblazer District Awards and they uh, were awarded Troop of the Year. There are 53 units, Troop of the Year. <laughs> Jeff Waterman is next. Jeff is the 
Scoutmaster of the Year. Sean, Sean Stetch is next, and he is Scouter of the Year for the district. Now our efforts as a Methodist church go beyond our units that we charter. And there are two uh, awards that were earned by units and people. The first is Kate Hoops. She is Cubmaster of the Year. Cubmaster of the Year. Now the second is kind of an unusual award. Will the members and uh, leaders of uh, ship 5297 stand, please? And there's a few less of those. Ah, Jose, thank you. They won ship or crew of the year. There are very few ships. I believe there's only two in this council. Is that correct? <laughs> but uh, they are sea scouts. Now, to the best of my knowledge, we don't have any explorer post or um, STEM units associated with people from our church. If we do, please let me know. Next uh, award was uh, Donna Leppert. Yes, <laughs> stand up. <laughs> she was awarded the uh, United Methodist Cross and Flame Award at Philmont by the National Scouting Director of the Methodist Church this year. Now, the next one is really interesting. I need um, Bob Garvin, Barry Muzio, Sandy Marks, Gene Arnold, Brian English, and the pastor to stand. Come on over here, pastor. Now we need the rest of our congregations to stand. And we need all of our scouts to stand because we consider them family. This award was awarded by the General Commission on United Methodist Men and was signed by a General Secretary of the United Methodist Church, Greg Arnold. It is called the Shepherd Church Charter Recognition. It is awarded to churches annually that supports our community outreach youth ministries. Our church has been selected and recognized as an outstanding chartering organization for youth organizations. So give yourselves an applause. Now, you may all sit down. I'm going to take a, uh, just a moment at the threat of extending this too long to read to you the greetings from Stephen Scheid, who uh, sent this award along. You're our Savior's United Methodist Church. Congratulations on the work of the Christ in your community. I celebrate with you the outstanding service you provide to youth. Thank you for your service and who you are. In the 18th chapter of Matthew, Jesus is asked by his disciples, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? The response of God incarnate would leave the disciples wanting to understand, for he called a little child to him and placed a child among them and said, truly I tell you, unless you change <clears throat> and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the, heaven of, in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever becomes one such child in my name welcomes me. We know the disciples were not satisfied from their actions in the following chapter of Matthew. The disciples rebuked those who were bringing the children to him to be blessed. Christ's response is profound and visible today in you. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. I can think of no better name for a congregation that lives into the call of Christ than our saviors. Thank you for seeing 
the vision of heaven today. We reach into communities with eternal hope. We reach into relationship with others. We live as the body of Christ among the people. I am grateful to be in the work with you. The next generation is bright because of you. Remain steadfast. When the challenges come, for the harvest is coming. Please continue your work and know that you are prayed for daily. Yours in the Fellowship of Service, Stephen Scheid. Thank you very much. Scouts and leaders, please rise. Scout sign. The Scout Oath. The Scout Law. A scout law is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courageous, kind, obedient, cheerful, charity, brave, clean, and hard. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning. Uh, my name is Dan Meyer, and this is a time of the service where we share those joys and concerns and share them with our church family. So if you have a joy or concern, please raise your hand, get a microphone from one of the ushers, um, state your name, and tell us your joy or concern. So any joys or concerns this morning? I'm Marcy Schilling. I have two concerns. Um, our daughter Tracy was in a little uh, snowmobiling accident three weekends ago and she tore her rotator cuff. So she's having surgery on Tuesday. Now she has her daughter, our granddaughter Alex, who has cerebral palsy. So it's going to be a bit of a problem for her with lifting and so forth. So they do have a couple of caregivers that are going to help out. So just prayers for her little Tracy to get through that. And then I'm gonna have a total knee replacement a week from tomorrow. So prayers for my little sweetie here, who uh, <laughs> I just took care of him with two knees, so I think he can handle me with one. So hopefully everything will go okay. So thank you so much. Thank you. Susan Gellerstead, um, I'd like prayers for Doris Young and if you get a chance, drop her a card because she's kind of had a tough week, I understand. And secondly, people who worked at the Church Bazaar last November, you're nodding your heads, you were absolutely wonderful scouts. And you, when our energy went that way, your energy just kept going up and it was great. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Ted Leitz. I'd like to pray um, or raise concern for my wife, Andrea, sitting over there. She had a stroke about three, three and a half months ago. But she's getting a lot better, but uh, still got a ways to go. I'm Jim Leppert, and uh, I'm asking for prayers for Stephen and Connie Scheid. Uh, Stephen has borne the majority of the data processing for the uh, United Methodist Leadership Committee and has contracted COVID. He and his wife both have it. He's on his second course of steroids after a very serious bout of uh, pneumonia. And your prayers are appreciated. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Legg. Um, I've been nominated somehow or other to be um, the provider of information for our blood drive. It's a virtual blood drive, and it's a joy to be able to try and 
help others. There's a critical shortage of blood right now in the Chicago area. And uh, so we're having a virtual blood drive. Um, there's information in our sign. Um, also, if you didn't get a Valentine, we have some left out, out front if you want to pick one up. Um, if you look in the sign, there's a hyperlink in there that you can use to sign up. And it runs for an entire month from Valentine's Day to St. Patrick's Day. You can go at your convenience um, to the location of your choice. Um, we also have a little competition with our Redeemers um, over down the street, and we'd love to win. So if any of our Scout Troop people would like to participate, parents, um, I'll, I'll be giving information to Jim, and he can pass it along to you. Thank you. We must win. <laughs> Uh, just prayers for uh, my mom's brother um, did pass away uh, about a week ago, I believe. The flowers on the altar are for him. Um, he's behind two adult kids um, and then uh, his wife as well. So prayers for the person family. His name is Daryl. So we also pray for those who have lost loved ones. We've had a very tough week this week. It began with Fred Pollen dying on Sunday and Jim Anderson dying on Friday. Here we have Martha with us. Uh, we would like to let you know we love you, we care for you, we've been praying for you, we have accompanied you, we'll continue to do so. And receive our, our love here in this place. We also pray for Michelle Anderson, um, Jim, uh, as Fred also, uh, went peacefully, accompanied by loved ones. And we will let you know when we will uh, celebrate their uh, uh, celebrations of life, funerals. Uh, one is for Fred, uh, March the 5th at 11 o'clock. And uh, for Jim is pending. We will let you know. Thank you. Any other joys and concerns? If not, I will lead us in prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you on this beautiful day with sunshine, hoping that spring is right around the corner. We are so grateful to have these scouts here in church with us as they're learning so many valuable life lessons as they go along their scouting path, starting in elementary school all the way through the college years. May you look over them and help them in their ways as they learn about life. Please be with our church, our Lord. As, as Pastor David has mentioned, we lost two of our brothers, Fred Poland and Jim Anderson this week. May you be surrounding their family with all the love that they need and know that we will support them in anything that they need as well. Now for those who have not been spoken today but are on our hearts, we know you are working with them and please surround their families and be with their doctors as we move forward. And as we continue to deal with the pandemic, it is getting better, but it's not over. So please be with all those who've been afflicted with COVID and all those nurse and healthcare workers, as well as those in schools who are dealing with mass debates. And now, please join me in the prayer that our Lord Father taught us to say by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we continue with our worship, we come to the time where we share of uh, our gifts, talents, our resources, especially our resources. And we want to be hospitable to you who are visitors. You don't need to uh, put anything in the offering. You are our guests. But 
If you are moved to do so, you can do so. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but you're our guest, remember that. And uh, as the offer is played, uh, you will hear the film on him, and there will be some uh, shots of, of some screen, I mean, uh, pictures of <clears throat> a film on Scouting Ranch. Nope. Next time, next year, we will have that for sure. Uh, I promise. I invite now the ushers and, uh, to receive our gifts and offerings. Join me in the prayer of dedication. Let us pray. May the gifts we offer be used to shower others with grace and to patch the portholes, injustice, inequality, and poverty have created in the roadways of the kingdom. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. You have to listen very closely while we play our song, because I have a question for you when we're finished. So don't do the thing you normally do and clap, even just to be nice. No, don't. I have a question. Wait for it. Listen closely. Thank you. 
Now the question. How many of you recognize those songs? Raise your hand if you recognize them. That's okay, kids. That's okay. If you don't know, that's fine. <laughs> now get those hands up. I want to see. How many recognize? Fabulous, because now we've come to the congregation participation part of our service. We're going to play it again, and this time you're going to sing along with us. Don't worry, we've got the words on the screen. Don't laugh and just sing. done. <laughs> this morning's uh, scripture reading is from the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter, the 15th verse. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. I was planning to give you the long version of the sermon, but uh, we have only 10 more minutes, so I'll <laughs> use the short one. So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So go and do likewise. Thank you. <laughs> well, no. no that's <laughs> Probably that will be the shortest sermons I've ever preached in my life. But, uh, but that's impossible. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm struck by, by Joshua's boldness to let the people know that he is, in his house they're going to serve the Lord. And he is making a, a clear declaration about what matters most uh, to him and his household. But as for me, he means, I don't care about the rest of you. I am going to serve the Lord. He is stating clearly and without any doubt who he will serve. And, and he is encouraging 
the Israelites to make the, the, a choice as well. Uh, because, you know, you must decide who you'll follow and who you will serve. And uh, Joshua tells them, well, you, you, if you want to follow the false gods of the Amorites, fine. But you have a choice. You can also fo uh, follow the true and living God of Israel. And he's telling them this because Joshua knows all too well that talk is cheap and obedience is costly. You know? Think about this. The Israelites have been in the desert and wandering and going into the promised land. Saw the miracles. Miracle after miracle. And still, still there were some Israelites that held on to foreign gods. And Joshua reminds them that God is there with them. Reminds them where they've been, where they are now, and where they are going. And he reminds them that God is a demanding God, ex expecting true and single-minded loyalty from those who claim to serve. And, and, and Joshua, uh, Joshua's words are, are a call for an undivided loyalty and complete commitment. <clears throat> I suspect you've seen the cartoon where a hen and a hog are standing outside the church following the service and the pastor has just preached on how to help the poor and hungry and the hen says, I've got it. We can help by providing a, a ham and eggs breakfast for those who don't have anything to eat. <laughs> oh, no, you don't, says the hog. For you, that only means a contribution, but for me, it's total commitment, you know? <laughs> and that's what Joshua is calling for, total, unreserved, unconditional commitment. What does it have to do with us? Well, I think that we have to choose sooner or later whom we will serve. I assume that because we are here, we have chosen to serve God. Am I right? Okay, some of you at least have said, you know. <clears throat> and you're expecting the question again, right? Yeah. But no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> no. Aren't we, supposed, if we are here, aren't we supposed to have claimed that we will follow the Lord, right? Yes. Uh, yes. yes. <clears throat> because if you follow God, if you follow Jesus, there will be, there will come a time when you must say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Remember, Jesus says, if you declare with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Because there is no pleading the fifth when it comes to choosing to follow and serve God in Jesus. Because every day of our lives involves us making some kind of choice, a decision. I mean, some choices are easy and some choices are difficult. Well, let me try. Help me here. Tea or coffee? All right, easy choice. Well, some of you are, are, are young, so you don't have coffee. So I'll ask you, uh, milk or orange juice? No. Uh, OJ, yeah. <laughs> and what about chocolate or vanilla ice cream? Chocolate. Chocolate. Donuts or bagels? Donuts. Don't, don't shout this one. Don't shout this one. Rams or Bengals? Don't shout it. <laughs> Bears, right? <clears throat> and you know you have made a dozen, a dozen choices before you arrive here at this place this morning. You chose your clothes, your breakfast, the route to church, your speed. Here, here is an interesting fact. Sheena uh, Iyengar, I cannot pronounce that name, has found that uh, she's from Colombia. Uh, 
she has found that the average person makes about 70 decisions every day. So over the course of 70 years, that's 1,788,500 decisions. Wow, that's a lot. Because our life is shaped by thousands of choices we make. <clears throat> we make our choices, and our choices turn around and make us. You know, I realized that at the age of 59, I am nothing more than <clears throat> the sum total of all the choices I have made over all the years in my life. I am what I am, where I am, doing what I do as a result of thousands of choices made over a long period of time, 59 years. Some of you are very young, of course. You have not made you know, many choices, decisions. But, but the one like becoming a follower of Jesus Christ or becoming a scout, you know, those are great choices, great choices. And when you get to age 70, you'll be proud that you made this choice among million others. See, God has given us the power to choose, the power of choice. And we must choose for ourselves. Remember, there are two sides of a sheet of fly paper. And it makes a big difference to the fly which side it chooses. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we choose the attitude we will embrace. We choose love or we choose hate. We choose to forgive or to reject. We choose to serve or to be served. We choose our actions, we choose our deeds, we choose our behaviors. And we choose what we look at, think of, watch on TV, and believe in. Because we choose the direction we take, our work, and the use of our times, and our talent in treasure. However, of all the choices we face in life, the choice to know God or ignore God has eternal consequences. Proverbs 28, 26 says, Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in God's wisdom are kept safe. Choosing to serve God is the most important decision of the will that every person must make one day. Jesus says, take up your cross daily and follow me. And the truth is, this is a choice we make, <clears throat> not just one day, but every morning when we wake up. Choose to walk in the light of God or stumble in the darkness. <clears throat> because if we call ourselves Christians, if we call ourselves scouts, we must choose to serve God. We choose to do our duty to God and to serve others at all times. In our faith, in our life journey, we will run into dangers and temptations. You know, there are literally millions of false gods we can choose to divide our loyalties on. And we, like Joshua and the Israelites of old, need to remember where we've been, where we are now, and where we are going. And Jesus makes that quite clear for us you know, in the Gospels. He tells us that, like the Israelites, uh, they have been delivered, protected, and provided for. He tells us that we have also been delivered, protected, provided for. We have been called, we have been loved, we have been forgiven. We have been assured that Jesus is still with us always. I mean, do we take that much for granted? 
Do we divide our commitments and our loyalties? Or do we, like Joshua and the Israelites, say, we will serve the Lord? So each Sunday when we come together here, when we meet together, in a sense, is a reminder of that covenant that Joshua had with the Israelites. It's a reminder of a covenant renewal ceremony. We are given the opportunity to remember whose we are, who we are, where we are, where we are going, and how to get there. Therefore, I encourage you to always search your heart and to always come back to the same place like Joshua did. As for me and my house, I will serve. I invite you now to stand. Oh. And I invite the scouts to come up to the front and leaders and face the congregation, please. I invite all of you to join me in this blessing of these scouts, leaders, and of course families. I invite you to extend your hand towards them as we uh, do this blessing. Oh God, your will is that all your children should grow into fullness of life. We lift to you the ministry of scouting that has been part of this community for 30 years. We give you thanks for camping and outdoor adventures to teach us that the world is our great home, for study and work, to build character, for service, to see our responsibility to those in need, for encouragement in genuine patriotism and vital faith. Bless the work of scouting in this place here at Our Saviors and around the world that through its efforts, these young men and women, like our God, increase in wisdom and in stature and in love with you and all people. We pray for continued safety and growth for scouts, leaders, their families, friends, and all who may influence the, be influenced by this program. And we pray for continued support for this congregation here at Saviors and that each and every scout may consider this community a place of welcome and love. We thank you for your calling to serve the least of these, and in so doing, to discover ourselves in your image of grace and love. We bless you. We love you. We walk with you. Amen. Thank you. As you remain standing, we join our voices in the closing hymn, Take Up Thy Cross.
Audience attention. Color guard attention. Color guard forward march. Color guard hall. Color guard, please retrieve the colors. Scout sign our hand over heart. Color guard, retrieve the colors. Color guard, halt. Two. You may be seated. Thank you so much for your participation this morning and for our scouts that accompany here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we continue to commit ourselves to uh, work with you and to uh, support you in any way we can. This is your place, this is your home too. And we're glad that we can be here together. And as we prepare to leave this sanctuary, and move to fulfill our call, our duties in the wider world, let us pray together for God's help. Loving God, we ask you to fulfill the, the word sown in our lives today. Make us fruitful every hour throughout all the days of our lives. Give us faith as wide as the world and as high as the stars and as deep as the soul of Jesus. And help us each and every day to choose to serve you each day. And the grace of Christ Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Amen.